A month ago, I came across this Amazon listing. Obviously GMK clones, and not just the colorway, but also the novelties. But they were only 30 to 35 bucks. So I said, what the hell? And I bought two. A few days later, they show up. Initially, after unboxing them, they looked quite good, but it gets more complicated. When I got these, I fully expected them to look like GMK keycaps, but I expected them to be thin, not feel very good, and especially not have compatibility. However, these have really good compatibility, just like the GMKs. This is the box that came with these keycaps right here, and they're both identical. So opening this up, we obviously have the F keys, and then all of your other keys, like your multimedia, your number keys, and these even have all of the novelties, like the real GMKs. But the big thing for me compatibility wise is this key right here. This is a Ducky 13SF. Now on this keyboard, the right shift key is actually a 2U key and this has stabilizers on it. To get a keycap set that will fit a keyboard like this is hard to find, especially from 30 to 35 bucks. However, the real GMKs like this one actually have the 2U with the stabilizers. That is really rare to see. Now this one is for like a typical 75% board, but on some 65 and probably some 75% boards, you have that 2U key that's very hard to find, but has the same compatibility as a GMK real set of keycaps. That is very impressive. Now that was awesome, but what about the bad? There is a lot. Firstly, the biggest complaint is the home keys. Now here on the F and the J keys, and on the other set on the F and the J keys, those are the home keys with these little nibs right here. It's gonna be hard for you to see. However, as you can see, I got two sets so I could test inconsistencies between the two. Now, coming down here on the left home key on the left, the nib or the little protrusion is pretty flat. You can barely feel it. But on the J right here, it's quite protruded. So just having that inconsistency, having OCD, it bothered me quite a bit, a little bit. So that could be a deal breaker for some people. However, coming over to this one, I wanted to see if it was the same thing or just an inconsistency. However, there wasn't an inconsistency. In fact, it was a little bit weirder than that. It was exactly the same as this one right here, but it was opposite. So on this one, there's barely a nib on the F key and there is one on the J. On this one, there's a nub on the F key but not on the J key. It's like it's there, but it's very small. So on both of them, they have the same problem but literally opposite, like they're identical, but opposite. So that was a little bit annoying. Now, when you're actually typing on your desk, this is slightly infuriating to someone like me. Obviously, if you don't touch type, it's not that big of a deal. However, it's a little bit infuriating. But the thing that was really impressive is, well, how they looked. These look really, really good for being a really low price point. Also, the thickness. I was expecting these to be tinny sounding garbage, but no. These have a nice deeper sound due to the thicker PVT. That was a welcome surprise. However, the edges do not look great. The edges on the bottom of these keycaps are not perfect. Now taking one of these off, we can see right here, we have some of these little wings coming up. As you can see, there's one of those that's, this one's quite bad, but there's quite a few of them. And you can notice them if you're looking right down at the board. Now, obviously this is something that you're gonna notice more when you have this than in a video. However, as you can see, so this little wing right here is due to printing and they're kind of all over this. You can kind of see them from the bottom. However, this might not bother you. This might be nitpicking. However, if we compare this to a very popular mid-grade keycap, these are about 55, 60 bucks, ACO keycaps. Again, these are 30, 35. These are about 55 or 60. If we take the same keycap right here, you can see that the inconsistencies on this one uh, are not there on this one. This one is clean. It is quite clean. This one you can see has some printing right there going on. This is definitely not as polished uh, or as clean as the ACO keycaps right here. However, this didn't bother me too much. That being said, if you're in love with the way these look, they look awesome and they sound good. And for some people that may be enough, but for those who it's not, we still have more problems. The letters are, well, not even close to consistent. Along the number row, some are closer to the edge than others. The weight of the font changes pretty dramatically. And it's not just on a few keys, it's on basically the entire set. There is a lot of inconsistencies with font weight 
and where they're actually placed and the three on one of mine was actually kind of crooked it's just not that good however i've also seen way worse at 30 to 35 bucks and kind of at a typical typing distance it's not super noticeable if you're not looking for it. However, there is one thing I cannot get over. And to show you, I have to turn off the lights. As you can see, after plugging in, here is our problem. Even though it is fairly thick PBT, you can clearly see the RGB popping through. And it looks freaking awful. For some people, it may not look bad. It looks so awful to me. Now, this is remedied pretty easily by literally just turning off your RGB, and then it looks nice. But oh my god, is it bad. If you want the worst possible shine-through, non-shine-through keycaps, I guess this is perfect for you. However, yeah, don't expect to have your RGB on with these and have it look nice, because yeah, it's, it's a mess. RGB in these keycaps is like water in oil. It doesn't mix well. Now for me, when I paid 35 bucks, I wanted the look. I was hoping for a good feeling and sound, and honestly, they delivered. They sound and feel really, really good for 30 bucks or 35 bucks. Don't believe me though, take a listen for yourself. Now there are still gonna be all those people saying, well, you stole their designs. And to those people, I say, probably if you're gonna be spending only $35 on keycaps, you're probably not gonna get the original legitimate GMK ones. But overall, do I think these are worth it for 35 bucks? Well, actually, yes, because even though these do have a lot of issues, they still look awesome and they feel pretty good and they don't compromise the sound of your board. So if you wanna make your budget board look awesome like these, I do think this is a really great way to do that on a really, really tight budget. Although I still think I would recommend the Akko keycaps over these unless you really like the designs because some of them are really cool. Also, if you wanna throw these on your own keyboard, I have Amazon links below where you can go pick them up, but click here if you wanna see the whole process I used to mod the Ducky 13 SF with these same GMK clones.